Hey, Coach. Hope you're well. Um, Thank you. You too, man. Thanks. Um, you know, the NFL draft just passed. Um, I know that you had a you had a number of guys that you had relationships with that uh, at Ohio State that, uh, that that went pretty high in the draft. Um, for you, uh, first off, uh, just what was your reaction to that? And, and second of all, you know, with with what you've been able to do on the on the recruiting trail, how has that uh, played into what you've been able to do here at uh, here at BC? Well, it was awesome to have Chase and then Jeff and then Damon go like that. Um, you know, afterward, I said to my wife, that that's why I came back to college football, because you, you know, you change lives and, and you feel that. And it makes you so happy that you're able to do that for people. And that was a special, special night, you know, to talk to those guys afterward. And, you know, you knew Chase was going two and Jeff was probably going three. But to take a kid like Damon Arnett, who – decided to come back to school, trusted you, uh, put his faith in you, and gave you everything he had, and then changed the kid's life. I mean, that's, that's a very, very special moment. And um, again, that's, that's why you come back to college football for, for moments like that. As far as for recruiting, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it, it, shows you, it shows you how we can develop people. It shows you what we were able to do last year with the defense that was ranked 75th in the country. Uh, we flipped them to number one in the country and had three players go in the first round. And, you know, I think the recruits like to see uh, we've been able to help develop people and, um, you know, help change lives. And, you know, I think, I think the best part about it is when, 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 when those players, especially, you know, it, for me, guys that I personally worked with every day, like Jeff and Damon, for those guys to come out and, uh, you know, thank me for that and the recruits see it. Yeah, I think that's helpful, but it's real. So it's uh, it's pretty cool to say. And just as a as a follow up with that, um, you know, have you been able to to link that into what BC has been able to do as a as a program, been able to combine the two and, and look at what BC's had a success and be able to combine it so far with with what you personally have been able to do? Yeah, definitely. Um, the one thing about BC that that I've always thought is. The guys who get drafted, they, they turn out to be really good players in the NFL. You know, they're smart, tough, reliable, um, very accountable. They work hard. You know exactly what you're getting. Um, and I think if you see that, and you look at the guys right now in the league, I think all those coaches would tell you that they love those guys and that people look hard at the BC players. So hopefully we can combine a little bit of the two and continue the tradition. But, you know, it was awesome to see AJ go. And, uh, you know, we were all very proud of him. You know, I, I know uh, Matt LaFleur very well, and um, I know he, he was very excited, and he's got a great one. Thanks, Coach. We will go next to Tom Keegan. Hey, Coach, thanks for doing this. Sure, Tom. Thanks for coming on, man. Sure. Um, you know, with your background uh, coaching defensive backs for seven years in the NFL and then two first-round draft choices, I would think recruiting that will be a snap. And how will you um, plan to carry on BC's tradition of having great offensive linemen? Can you cash in on that? Even though it's a new staff, can you cash in on the tradition that, that BC has with that position? Yeah, I, I think we have to. I think you guys all know what the offensive line has been like around here. And truthfully, I think it all starts up front. So if we're going to do the things that we want to do, we have to build it up front. You know, that's – to me, that's going to be who we are on offense, no matter how many times we throw it or how many times we run it. So we need to do that for sure. And I think it helps with the staff that we have. I mean, Coach Sigdeni has been around a lot of great ones, and Coach Applebaum, same thing with him. And we've got a great staff to help help recruit those guys. And uh, coming from uh, Columbus for a year anyway, uh, really, it's it's not the only game in town. You got the the – the Blue Jackets and you got the Clippers, but Ohio State is everything there. And then you come to a crowded sports market like this. If you get it going, do you think you can um, heighten the profile of BC football? I do, and, and we will get it going. And it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, but that's kind of been our whole message since we got here. In order to get it going, we're going to need that. And, you know, I think everybody's, everybody wants that. And everybody's been looking for that. They want to see an exciting product. They want to get behind their college team. Um, and, and we're going to get that done. And, and we need the people to do that. But I think once you see that, 
I think you'll see it's just going to add to the great sports town that we're in. Every great sports town wants the college team to do well. And, uh, you know, it's going to be our job to bring the energy and the juice and make sure they feel part of that. So that's the plan. Thank you. You got it. We will go next to Rich Thompson. Rich, I think you're on mute. I still think you're on mute, Rich. I can't hear you. Rich, we will circle back to you. Let's try going to Trevor Haas first. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Good, what's happening? Not too much. I'm just curious about where you think you are right now as opposed to where you thought you'd be uh, in late April, just kind of how it's you know unfolding with obviously what's going on just compared to where you expected to be if things were under normal circumstances. Well, I expected to be in my office. Um, you know, where I'm at right now is in my home office, which I never in a million years expected to ever use when I got this house. So physically, that's way different. Um, you know, it, it's just where I expected to be. That's, that's a great question. It certainly would have been to be around the players, get really close with the players, have implemented the scheme, offense, defense, and special teams. Um, and where we are right now, we're trying to get to know the players more through Zoom meetings, um, spending time with them there and, and trying to implement the system. I would have thought by now we would have had all spring and we would, I would have been watching the spring cutups and you know seeing what we have and, and what we need to do to move forward and change some things, but we, we don't have much of that. So, you know, hard to ever think about this, right? I mean, did you ever think you'd be having a Zoom meeting with me from your living room? So, you know, I think, throw expectations out the door, do the best we can every single day, make sure our players are healthy and safe and their families are healthy and safe and our staff's families and just wake up and do the best you can every single day. But for what this staff has accomplished thus far, I mean, I'm so appreciative of all their hard work and everything that they've been able to do and how close they've gotten with our players already. So it's been awesome. As a follow-up, it seems like you obviously you're the kind of guy who likes to just jump right in and kind of make things happen right away. So just how, how has the adjustment been mentally just dealing with that kind of when you want to go, go, go and get things done, but you have to sit back and wait at home, like you said? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, just I miss walking around campus and seeing the students and, you know, meeting some more faculty and just everything that I kind of thought about doing and was excited about, you know, being on the move and getting around to see alumni. It's just kind of been put on pause. But, you know, the one thing I thought, I thought I was a really organized person coming into this and I realized I'm not. And it's, it's helped me get a lot organized. And it showed me, too, that you can do a lot from home as well. And, you know, it, we're doing the best we can with the staff and the players. So that's where we're at right now. Thanks. Rich, let's uh, go back he, to you. Let's see if it's working. here now. You got it, Jeff? Rich, we, we got you, man. A lot of okay. clear. All right. Hey, here's a quick one. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Boston's kind of like a ground zero in this pandemic. And I was just wondering, have you been in contact with your recruits? Uh, and uh, have any of them expressed concerns about the, the, the situation in Boston right now? No, we haven't, we haven't heard. None of them okay. have talked about that. Oh, right. And as a quick follow-up, uh, anything more on Phil Jerkovic? Uh, kind of. No, no, nothing yet. I thought that'd be the first question you guys asked. You waited, <laughs> you waited a little bit. Um, no, I haven't heard anything back yet. Still, still waiting around. I'm, I'm sure as soon as we know, you'll know. So. I'll let you know. I'll have Jay Bomb let you know as soon as we find out anything. Hey, thanks. You're welcome. We will go next to Julian. What's going on, Joe? What's up, Julian? Uh, live and kicking, man. You know how it goes. But uh, I just wanted uh, just a general question, man. Um, how have you kind of been keeping track of whatever you've been able to hear information wise about? possibilities for a season or or uh, what to do over what, what guys might be doing uh how like a camp might look how much time team guys might need to prepare and, and how have you been talking to your staff about the possibilities or what might uh what might happen yeah you, you know I, we're on the phone a lot with um the acc coaches and mm -hmm. obviously i'm in touch with martin constantly and you know we all play through the scenarios and you know, it's our job. We have a bunch of calendars we've laid out. And if it's this amount of weeks or this amount of weeks or this amount of weeks that, you know, we'll have a plan and do the best that we can. And that's really all we can do right now is, you know, try to get a bunch of plans ready. And wherever one they 
tell us we have to use, we'll be ready to do so. Is it like an optimal situation or optimal number of weeks? Like, hey, we might need a month, two months, or this time is too short, this time is too long. You know, that all varies. And, and my opinion is what it is. And, you know, at this point, I'd like to leave that up to other people to decide. Um, you know, I, I just, my belief on this whole thing is we need to do whatever we can for the players to be safe and healthy. Mm-hmm. And that, that's the main objective. We can't get into a situation where we're going to put their health, uh, them getting injured, into jeopardy. And as long as they give us enough time to do that, then we're going to put the we're going to put the scheme in, do the best we can, and make sure the players can get out there and go play ball. Uh, I was reading something. I got two real quick ones. I was reading something. Uh, I can't remember who said it, but coaches were kind of going over ways, not just physically to keep guys in shape, but installing plays, installing playbooks, and teaching guys language and things like that. Um, and one coach said, like, that was the least of our worries um, because you can teach it. But how easy or difficult has that stuff maybe been in, given the circumstances? Whether it's well, that, that's going to be difficult. And I'd like to talk to the coach who said that and ask him how, he's, how he would do that with, with the first-year staff that you haven't implemented your offense, defense, and your special teams. Yeah. What it's going to do, truthfully, you know, maybe in year one, you're not going to get to see as much, you know, because if you only have – so many weeks to install without a full spring, you might not get to see the full arsenal. You know, maybe month number two is different than month number one. So I think that's where we have to be really smart as coaches is how much mentally are they going to be able to handle and execute at a high level um, given the amount of time we're going to have with them. And it might look a lot simpler in the first month. It might look a lot different in the second month, you know? So we just have to be really smart. Imagine all of a sudden I, I tried to teach you the whole playbook in X amount of weeks when it was designed for double the amount. So we got to be smart as coaches to make sure our players are healthy and put them in the best position to succeed on the field. And we've had a lot of conversations about that. We'll continue to do so. That's a great question that you bring up. I was going to ask, I was actually, I don't know how much you can or can't say, but can, have you started implementing that stuff or have, uh, and yeah, how do you do it? Yeah, we're, we, we meet with our players through Zoom kind of like this. Um, you know, I could share my screen with you right now and show you some plays and Please. awesome stuff on a whiteboard. And, you know, I'm you don't want to do that, Julian. You just got to call me up late at night when I'm done with all my work and let me know, man. I don't, my sleep schedule is screwed. So hit me up whenever you want. You just, you just got to go through J-Bob still or else all of a sudden we'll be getting really really sure. So, um, no, but, you know, there's, we can do it. Now, the hard part is this, right? Most people learn by doing, failing. That's, that's what I was going to say. And doing it again. So that's, that's done. So for the kid who struggles learning just by listening and seeing on film, it's going to be harder. So we just got to be creative. And like I said, we got we to gotta make sure when we get back, we can execute whatever it is at a high level. Oh, uh, and then I also wanted to make sure I asked you. Uh, you you yeah, said two more, man. This is turning into four. I can't count. You guys are going to start to get mad. I can't count. No, it's, it's quick. It's uh, Justin Simmons, the conference call with uh, some of the uh, – uh, past players. Uh, how was that? It was great. What a great group of guys. Um, they've all been in touch. They've reached out individually. And, you know, it kind of goes back to what people asked or someone had asked about the community in the, in the city and the state, right? I mean, those players want to be involved. And they're asking how they can be involved. And I want them to be. Just like I want you guys to be involved. And I need all your help. It's the same thing with them. It's the same thing with the city. Same thing is, you know, everybody that we're asking to be. No, thanks. Thanks, Julian. We Julian. will go next to uh, Matt Vittor. Hey, Coach, with the um, the news yesterday coming out with the the name, image, and likeness stuff, are there things that you have to start planning for now? The things that to 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 get a feel for how that affects your program and 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 how to best make that useful both for your program but also for your for your players. Yeah, it is, and it will be. Um, I've had other people on our staff working hard on that, so I could focus on other things right now. So that's going to be a hard question for me to get into great detail with you. Um, you know, I think when we get out of this thing and I get back into the swing of things, I'll start paying attention to that more. But I have a bunch of people right now on the staff working on that for me to make sure that we're getting ahead of it. Are you in favor of the rule? You, you, you glad that it passed as it did? i got to dig into it more. Again, I've been... I've been involved with so many other things at this point where 
for me to give my opinion on that right now without really being totally educated on it, it wouldn't be right. Okay. Sorry, I'm not trying to ignore your question. No, no, I'm just being honest with you. We'll go next to uh, Tom Keegan. Uh, from the past uh, programs I've covered, when there's been coaching changes, um, the players get really excited for spring ball if they were down on the depth chart because it's a, a brand new, fresh start and everything, and that's the way they look at it. But now, when you don't have nearly as much time to see guys live, are you going to have to rely more on what you see on film last year than you would have otherwise, do you think? You know, you got to look at the first five practices that we had and, and see what you – see where we were going. You got to look at some of the other drill work we were able to do. And I think training camp is going to be still really big. I want all our players to come into camp believing that they have a shot to compete and win a job. And, you know, again, I told them they're starting with a clean slate. And I'll, I'll hold to that. And we'll use training camp and whatever time they give us to have guys compete to go win a job. So that's, we're going to stick with that plan. Uh -huh. And then – uh, something you said was interesting that everyone is a different type learner. You know, some can learn from hearing it. Others have to do it and all that. Uh, do you give tests to players uh, to see what type of learners they are? And does that help you teach them once you find out? Yeah, well, tests are good for two things. It's I've always believed a test is good to see how well you're teaching a player. Because if I gave every one of you guys the same test in this room after teaching you and you all got the same three questions wrong, then I didn't do a good enough job of explaining it. So I think tests are good, yeah, to see where your players was at, where your players are at, how well they can pick up on how you're teaching, and then how good your coaching is. So I think tests are a huge part of both coaching and learning. And are they written tests? or uh... you, can, you can do both. You can do tests over the video. Like if I pulled up a – clip right now from a play and I said, Tom, give me this, or Joe, give me this, or Jason, get like, what do you, like, you can do them both ways, you know, because for example, like Barry might be better at watching film and answering a question and you might be better reading something to answer a question, but that's our job as coaches to try to figure out how they best learn. And, you know, we need to figure it out fast. All right. And my last question is if you guys can show me how to, Permanently mute Richie Thompson, not just online. I'd appreciate that. You got to ask. Jay Bomb can help you out on that one. He will. A little Harold on Harold crime today. Uh, we will go next to uh, Kevin Stone. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Good, man. What's happening? Not for nothing. So just to kind of piggyback off of, you know, the whole learning thing, uh, growing up as an athlete or even, you know, as a high school or college student, you're always told that time management is the most critical thing uh, that you can have. Have you guys really tried to stress, you know, that time management even more so now? Yeah, because you bring up a great point. Time management is so important, right? And we think that people being in a routine during this time is so important. So we're trying to keep the same routine we would have had. For example... You know, our guys would have worked out in the morning, met in the morning, and then had all afternoon to do their academics. So we're trying to keep them in a very, very similar routine, um, you know, so they're not just all of a sudden waking up at 2 o'clock, meeting, you know. So time management is the key. It's the key to anything. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. And then finally, we'll wrap things up today with Dan Rubin. Uh Coach, first of all, I've been able to check out your setup in the back there. I like the uh, I like the the helmet setup and the arrangement. That's uh that's nice. Can you see it from where you're at? Yeah, it's, it's behind you. See the see the helmets at least. The 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 call out to Albany is uh is I think probably my is, I know you went there. It's still my or coach there, but still my favorite part of it. I got my WPI helmet out there somewhere. <laughs> I need to get my Ohio State and Tampa and fill the rest. They're somewhere in boxes and I can't find them. Well, actually, I got the two BC ones, J Bob. And I got the BC ball right in the middle, buddy. Thank you for adding that. <laughs> I had to get some, man. I had to bring them over to my house. <laughs> um, just first, I mean, I, I feel like there's a there's a there's a part of it that's just how are you doing? How are you doing with the, with having moved and and moving across to you know 
partially across co part of the country and, and the situation of getting settled here in Boston where, you know, this is un an unprecedented time for you, a uh, family guy too, just how's it been moving over here? Dan, you're my new favorite guy because I think I've had a million interviews since I've been here and you're the first one to ask me that question. And I don't even know how to answer it. I mean, you like, you stumped me with that one. I mean, I'm good. I mean, my family's here, which is awesome. I'm so thankful that I didn't get stuck here and they got stuck in Columbus or I would not be doing good. Um, I've used this time to kind of spend more time with my kids and my wife. Um, so I'm really good from that regard. And I think you got to take the positives in any situation. And for a football coach to spend that much time with his family is huge because I can't tell you the last time I've gotten, I've got that, you know, everything else is, it's probably made things a little bit more difficult, but I'm a pretty positive guy. I stay up, I stay up beat. Sometimes you wake up in the morning and you, you're like, what, why is this happening again? You know, day 45, I think we're in. Um, but then you just talk to yourself a little bit and get yourself all fired up and you get rolling. And that's how I'll be until we, uh, we can pull out of this thing. But I appreciate asking that. Um, and I mean, you, you obviously come to BC knowing the, the team's reputation, the program's reputation, the landscape of the ACC, uh, even from afar, just understanding that, that landscape. Where do you uh, foresee BC's place right now in that landscape? How do, what's your understanding of the reputation? And how much do you want to put your own spin or, or continue the, the reputation of the program? Like, where do you see that maybe continuing on the line in some aspects or diverging from the line in, in other aspects? No, obviously I know the reputation well, which is, which is why I wanted to be here. Um, I know what the program's all about. I know what the school's all about. And I know what it's built on. And I know kind of where we are right now. And I know there's a lot of doubters out there. You know, Jason keeps me reminded of that constantly. He sent me something that showed we win four games next year. So, so if you look, yeah, people think we're going to be a four-win team next year. And if that's where they want to put us in the ACC, that's fine. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens when we actually get to put the ball down and finally play. You know, I said this early, is this going to be something that flips overnight? No, it's not. And is it, might, might it be a little harder now? Yeah, it might be, but it's going to be a process, but we're going to do it right. And I see this thing down the road having really, really special moments where people are going to talk about us in the ACC. And I'm very confident in that. And I'll tell the recruits that, I'll tell the community that. And I want people behind me who believe that. I want you guys to believe that. And if people don't, then I don't want them around. And that's, that's all I ask of anybody.